y'all welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is taya and this is taya's turning pages to go over all of the books that I've read during the month of January and I'm really happy about it because as y'all know if you've been following my channel for a little minute that during the last couple of months of 2023 I completely went MIA went ghost like any phantom okay there's just a lot going on and unfortunately reading and booktube and just bookstagram and all of that really wasn't a priority for me but I knew that once January hit that I was going to have to force myself to really get back out there and to get out of the slump and read these books and talk about them with you guys and I'm just really happy that I was able to do that because I ended up reading six books for the month now I know that might not sound like a lot for some of y'all or for some people watching this and that's totally fine I usually average about six to eight books every month with my nine to five as well as just other priorities I don't have time to read like 10 or 20 books a month I wish I could and I'm jealous of the booktubers and bookstagrammers and booktalkers that can do that but that's just not my reality so if I am able to get to six or eight books a month that's a win in my book now I know I haven't filmed a proper wrap-up since September 2023 so I will give you guys a refresher on how I normally go about my wrap-ups so I usually start out with the lowest rated book and then I work my way up to the highest rated book of the month so the lowest rated book that I have here is sitting at a 3.75 star any book that I'm talking about is Mermaids The Myths, Legends, and Lore by Sky Alexander. This is a recent pickup for me slash addition to my library and I went to Barnes and Noble three weeks ago and I picked up this book during that shopping trip. I'll leave that video linked up above in the cards. I mentioned before that I love mermaids. They are truly my favorite mythological creature. As you can see here I have a special edition of Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen which follows a black mermaid and so I'm a mermaid girl. I knew I needed to pick this up and add it to my library because I just really wanted to dip and dabble into this book and read from time to time you know the history, the lores, and the legends surrounding mermaids. Like I said, I'm giving this a 3.75 stars and that's not necessarily because I didn't enjoy this or I found this to be like a slog to get through. I feel like this book is very accessible and it's very short. I do want to start out with the things that I did like about this book. So one of the very first call outs for me that I really enjoyed when it came to this are the illustrations. I love the whole aesthetic of this book. So as you can see here, here's some illustration like I was talking about. Here's another one. Another thing that I really liked is that Sky Alexander didn't just focus on one part of mermaid lore and the myths. She made sure that she included folklore from all over the world. So not just from a western slash european lens she also included a chapter surrounding african mermaids and west african mythology as well as indian mermaids as well as east and south asian folklore and i just thought that was a really nice touch and of course very important and i also really like the fact that this book was short and accessible like i mentioned before this book is only 214 pages and the text is pretty short and digestible and broken out very well in my opinion now getting into my main and really only critique about this book like a lot of the information in here was pretty repetitive there were a few instances where i read one piece of information and then i would flip to the next page or the next chapter and that same text was repeated in that chapter or on that page. And I understand that when it comes to mythology as well as mermaids, there's always going to be uncertainty. We don't really know for sure if mermaids exist and not, you know, there's obviously all these debates and stuff like that. But I do feel like there was a lot of information and text repeated in this book. But either way, if you are a mermaid enthusiast or you enjoy learning about mythology or you just want to learn more about mermaids in general, then I definitely recommend picking up this book. And I feel like this is a nice gift for someone that is a mermaid enthusiast. Now we're moving on to the 4.5 stars of the month. Majority of my reads fell into this category, but I have three books here. And I'm going to start out with I feel like the most entertaining one out of all three because this one really kept me on the edge of my seat and I finished it very quickly and it is a Twisted Love Story by Samantha Downing. This is a book that I recently featured in my collective book haul video and I told you guys in that video that I wanted to read this book very soon because I was supposed to include this in a reading vlog and I just never got around to doing it and so I wanted to stop putting this book off and give it a read and I'm so happy that I did because I felt like this book is what single-handedly got me out of my reading slump. So this story follows two characters named Ivy and Wes and Ivy and Wes have been in a toxic relationship since they were in college so they do break up and get back together on and off and there have been a few instances where the police actually got involved because they would damage each other's property or they would get really nasty and just vile towards each other when they would get into really bad arguments and that's something that's mentioned in the synopsis when the good times are good they're good when the bad times are bad they're really bad and during one of their really bad arguments there's something tragic that happens that involves both Wes and Ivy and Wes and Ivy have kept this tragic event to themselves and they never spoke about it with anybody else until something happens where the police now have their sights set on Ivy and Wes and this tragic event that they were a part of that happened years ago starts to get brought to the surface and so now you follow Ivy and Wes trying to put their differences aside and also trying to see if they can get out of this situation that they put themselves in and the story takes off from there going back to my rating 4.5 to 5 stars this book was so entertaining so fast paced and so addictive and so compulsive like I was genuinely enthralled these types of books really reaffirm why I love thrillers so much because if you're in a slump or if you need pure escapism besides romance I just feel like thrillers are gonna give it to you I did not trust Ivy and Wes one bit neither one of them were likable and I know a lot of people don't like unlikable characters keep that in mind if you are interested in picking up this book both Ivy and Wes 
terrible, terrible people, but so entertaining. And this is actually the second book that I've ever read by Samantha Down. The first book that I read by her is called He Started It. And that book is in the same vein as this one where it's just crazy, chaotic, over the top, and just so unhinged that you can't put it down. And I also had an epiphany and realized that both Samantha Downing and Geneva Rose have very similar styles when it comes to their thrillers. So if you are a fan of Geneva Rose, I think you'll be a fan of Samantha Downing because I just noticed a lot of similarities with the way in which they would like kind of go off of the rails when it came to certain plot points. That's how it feels reading their books. There's always going to be so many different twists and turns and curveballs thrown your way that you genuinely don't really know how the story is going to end. And Geneva Rose actually quoted this book right here on the cover and it says, subtle, compelling, and clever. We'll have you rooting for the dysfunctional couple while simultaneously not trusting either of them. And the only reason why I'm not giving this a full five out of five stars is because I felt like when I got closer to the end, I just felt like it started to kind of fall apart a little bit. And then I felt like it wasn't as climactic as I thought it was going to be. Like it was fine, but I just don't know if that's the direction I wanted it to go in is all. Either way, this was still entertaining. It was still a good time. And I definitely will be picking up more by Samantha Downing in the future. The next book that I have here, I actually don't have a physical copy of because I listened to it through Audible, but it is Coming Home by Kennedy Ryan. This is a novella and it is a romance, more specifically a second chance romance. And it follows our two characters who are going to reunite at their alma mater. So right here, the synopsis says, they got everything they wanted, but never had each other. Teray Wallace and Naomi Spencer were close friends at Finley College, the prestigious HBCU they attended. And for those of you who do not know, HBCU stands for Historically Black College or University. The attraction that simmered between them every semester was a question they never got to ask or answer before soaring ambitions launched them to opposite corners of the world. Both chased their dreams of grit and glamour as high-profile journalists. They got it all, except the shot at being more than friends. Years later, Tere is an award-winning investigative journalist and Naomi is America's most popular morning show, but they both feel like something's missing. When their alma mater recruits its most famous alums for an interview during homecoming, every look, every touch is electric. The air hums with what could have been, and they're tempted by what they could have right now, if only for one weekend. Had they traveled the world, chasing something special, when all it took was coming home? So like I said, I rated this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and I think this is actually the lowest I've ever rated a Kennedy Ryan book. But we'll get into why I didn't rate this a full 5 out of 5 stars in a bit. Of course, I want to talk about the things that I did enjoy. First things first, I loved both Tere and Naomi. I thought that they were both interesting characters. I love the fact that they were both in the same, like, industry. They were both successful in their own right. You can tell that they match each other's fly, and I love that. Another thing that I really loved about this book is that I think it was a great decision to make this an audiobook because of it being short but also because HBCUs are just lively and lit and like the culture really does shine through when it comes to HBCUs specifically. I just felt like having this story told in audiobook slash audio format was a smart move. There's a little snippet of a marching band playing music and that's a huge part of HBCU culture is like the marching band and just music in general. I just really love that aspect and I felt like it really elevated the story and I also thought that both of the narrators that voiced Tere and Naomi did a great job too. I really felt the chemistry, the tension, the longing, the yearning, all of the emotions, and that's not an easy feat being an audiobook narrator, so give them their tens. And now the reason why I generate this a full five to five stars is not because of the story itself. It really is because of the length of the story and the fact that it's a novella. Even though I really liked Naomi and Tarek, I would have definitely liked to spend more time with them and really get to know their backstory and really get to know what led them to becoming the successful Tom's folks that they became. And you just can't really do that obviously with novellas. You can't explore all of that. That's really the only reason why this book got 4.5. And because I am a huge character driven reader, I like to be able to get connected to the characters. And I just feel like with novellas and short stories, you can't always do that. Both Overall, I still thought that this was a heartwarming story and I definitely recommend checking this out, especially during Black History Month. If y'all notice any differences in my lighting, I'm sorry about that, but I have to keep changing my ring light because I don't know, the lighting in here is just getting weird. Y'all hear me talk about this in every video and I promise one day I'm gonna figure it out the way in which my camera is set up. I can't have the curtains drawn in here because then it really throws off the lighting. I'm still trying to figure it out. It's a one woman show, bear with me. Getting into the rest of the books that I have here in the 4.5 category, Topaz by Beverly Jenkins. I'm actually just going to read the synopsis. I just feel like the plots to Beverly Jenkins historical romances are packed with so much and there's so many moving parts. One, I just don't really feel like putting it to my own words, but I also don't want to misspeak and like leave anything out that shouldn't be left out. So I'm just going to read it back here, but right here it says, Kate Love is an ambitious young newspaper reporter on the trail of a railroad stock swindler who has been preying on elderly black people. Her investigation points to Rupert Samuels, one of the wealthiest and most eligible black men in the East, but her covert efforts to get close enough to uncover the goods on him bring her to the brink of becoming his wife. Snatched from the altar by Dick's Wild Horse, a black Seminole marshal from Oklahoma's Indian country, Kate has no choice but to flee with the daring knight her father sent to rescue and wed her. Marriage had never been part of Kate's plans, and she isn't about to abandon her career to become the dutiful wife of a Wild West lawman bent on wrapping her in his own protective cocoon. 
Determined to hold on to her independence, despite the dark, simmering fire, Dix's bronze, muscular, and bracing knights, she challenges him at every turn. Yet, even as their battle of wills intensifies, the heat of their passion blazes with unmatched fury a wildfire of love that could only be answered in the sweet ecstasy of surrender. So diving headfirst into what I liked, the characters, as always, Beverly Jenkins' characters are crafted so well, and I don't know how she does it and how she outdoes herself every single time with each book that I read. She's so incredible at really getting the reader to invest and care about the character. It's really wild to me that some people are this talented, starting with Kate. Of course, I really liked Kate. I always loved Beverly Jenkins' female MCs. As you heard by the synopsis, she is a newspaper reporter. And so I just really loved how Kate was really about her business. She really cared about her career. And she really cared about the integrity that comes with journalism. And she really wanted to do right by the people. I just really respected her for that, especially during a time where women, but more specifically black women, were not being heard or taken seriously. I love that Kate demanded people's attention and respect. Now moving on to Dixon, who is her male love interest, a man. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Like I said before, the male characters that Beverly Jenkins crafts, all of them 10 out of 10. 10, 10, 10 10s across the board, truly. If you're one of those readers that loves a good book boyfriend, pick up her books. Like, just pick it up for that alone because these men will have you swooning. And Dixon is truly one of the best male characters that Beverly Jenkins ever crafted. He's up there with Ian, aka Nighthawk for me, okay? Like, he is up there with my other guy. I really love Dixon. I thought that he was so sweet, so patient. Oh my gosh. I loved how patient he was with Kate and really trying to make her feel comfortable in this weird marriage of convenience that they had. And I know that probably sounds like the bare minimum like the bars in hell but again these books take place in the mid to late 1800s early 1900s women were not heard seen nor validated not saying that there aren't some similarities to that today but it was really dark for the girlies back then and so i just love the fact that Dixon was very, like I said, patient with Kate. He really made sure that she felt comfortable in their relationship and didn't pressure her to do anything that she didn't want to do. And the other reason why I love this book so much was because I got always and forever crumbs. Here's me, here's me gagging. For those of you who are a bit confused or don't know what I'm talking about, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is one of my other favorite Beverly Jenkins novels and it's called Always and Forever. I love these characters, I love their romance, and I love the story. He actually made a cameo in Topaz. And so these books exist in the same universe in the same time frame. I didn't need me popping in here. I just wanted to quickly say that it's recommended that you read Topaz first before you read Always and Forever, at least according to Beverly Jenkins's website. Now I do plan on filming a guide to her books very, very soon. Definitely make sure you stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to jump in here and say that just in case you were looking to read these books soon and you wanted to know which one should be read first. And unbeknownst to me, I actually read this book first, but I really love the fact that both Grace and Blake showed up in this book, and it was just so nice to be able to make those connections between Catherine and Grace, seeing them actually develop a friendship, and also being able to confide in one another when it came to men in their lives. And it was such a heartwarming experience for me because of how much I love Always and Forever. Now, the reason why I rated this at 4.5 out of 5 stars versus a 5, I did appreciate the ending, and I thought it was very sweet and very romantic. I felt like it was anticlimactic. I felt like this book could have benefited from a bonus epilogue. That's really the only reason why I rated this at 4.5 out of 5 stars. I still love this story. I still definitely recommend it. I just wish the ending would have had a little bit more ump to it. That's all. Now we are getting into the final book that I have here in the 4.5 star category and it is Final Offer by Lauren Asher. So y'all I finally finished the Dreamland Billionaire series and I'm so so sad about it because if you're an OG viewer then you know how much I love the first book in this series which is called The Fine Print right here. Okay it's right here. Hopefully you can see that but right here. I love that book with everything in me. I love those characters. I love the story itself and the writing. Just everything that I want in that story is in that book. And so when I read the second book, which is called Terms and Conditions, I was pretty disappointed because I felt like that book was a copy and paste of the fine print, but not executed as well, which is unfortunate because Terms and Conditions actually features a black female MC. And I just felt like her story wasn't as impactful as the fine print and final offer, in my opinion. So when I got to final offer, I was a bit nervous because I was not expecting to be disappointed by Terms and Conditions. I was expecting to love it as much as the fine print, but I should have trusted the process because Lauren Asher delivered on this book. Book, more specifically Cal's story and it's what he deserved. Protect Cal at all costs. So in this story you follow the youngest brother Callahan aka Cal and his love interest Alana. Cal is the youngest brother out of the Kane brothers. Cal is probably the most troubled brother. He has been fighting an alcohol addiction for a number of years and now it is his turn to fulfill the last part of his grandfather's will. In order for him to gain his inheritance he has to return to his hometown known as Lake Wisteria and sell his grandfather's house which sounds easy enough until Cal ends up back in Lake Wisteria to sell this house and he realizes that his love interest slash ex-girlfriend slash ex best friend Alana lives at the house and Alana actually has a deed to the house with her name on it and so Cal cannot sell this house unless Alana agrees and when Cal left Lake Wisteria all those years ago he did not end on good terms with Alana. Alana is still heartbroken over how Cal treated her and how he left so you pretty much follow Cal throughout the story and trying to see if he's going to be able to convince Alana to sell the house and if he'll be able to get back into her good graces and win her back and the story takes off from there. He has a lot of baggage and a lot of demons that he's trying to work through and so you are really witnessing Cal's redemption and character development throughout the story. So 
of the things that I really enjoyed about the story, Cal, like I'm sorry, like I love Cal so much and I loved him when we were first introduced to him in the fine print and then I fell in love with this character even more when I read Terms and Conditions. I really loved his friendship with the main female character Iris. I loved their friendship and their dynamic and I loved how he had Iris's back no matter what. Even though I was a little bit nervous, I still couldn't wait to get to his story and figure out how he was going to work through all of his issues. Out of all of the brothers, Cal really did try to make an effort to be nice to people and kind to people and really make a difference. Even though he was struggling with so much, he still tried to put a smile on people's faces and still did his best to light up a room wherever he went. And that's how he was described in this book and in general throughout the series is that he's very charismatic, very charming, very kind, and I agree 100%. I really love the fact that Cal was just so down bad for Alana. I love that he had to grovel and that he had to really put in the effort and the work to show Alana that he's serious and also get her to trust him again. And there was definitely a lot of ups and downs and trials and tribulations when it came to these two and their story and Cal just trying to get back on the right track. That's really the main reason why I love Lauren Asher's storytelling and her writing and the worlds that she creates in these books because they're not perfect. Love is not perfect and I just think that she does a great job of really capturing that and really reminding the reader that yes while we all want a perfect love story that's not realistic. That's not how life goes. I just think that she did a great job at really showcasing that in all of the Kane brothers stories. Even though Rowan and Declan, Cal's brothers, were something especially Declan, I still love the fact that Lauren Asher again reiterated that love is not perfect, human beings are not perfect, we are all flawed and we're all just trying to do the best that we can every single day. And yes there were times where I was frustrated with this character. I wanted to jump into the book and shake him and like shake some sense into him and like tell him yo get it together before you lose out on Alana again but that's the thing about addiction. I really do like the fact that Lauren Asher explored those themes and those topics in her book. Now I can't 100% say that she handled it with care. What Cal is going through is like not my reality. I will say that I felt like there were a few moments where Alana wasn't being super empathetic or sensitive to Cal's addiction but I also am trying to remember that Alana has dealt with addiction before with one of her family members and so I do empathize with her and her having this no-nonsense policy. That's why I said I feel like Lauren Ash's stories are just very complicated but also very beautiful. It's not just about the romance, it's also about real life and the trials and tribulations of life. Besides that, I really liked Alana's character. I thought that she was hilarious. Honestly, I think the funniest woman out of the Dreamland Billionaire series in my opinion. I still love Zara and Iris but I definitely think Alana was the more comedic one out of the three and it makes sense because Cal is also the more comedic one out of his brothers. To me, they really were a match made in heaven and it made sense as to why they were BFFs all those years ago. Now y'all know I'm not the biggest friends to lovers fan but I am starting to find a few more books that have that trope that I'm actually liking. And I do plan on doing a video where I recommend those books so stay tuned but I felt like this book did a great job exploring that trope and really showcasing the beauty of it. You could just tell that they worked together, they were good together and it's just a shame that Cal's addiction really impacted their relationship and made them miss out on so many years together. I know you guys are probably confused as to why I rated this book a 4.5 and not a 5 star if I'm gushing about this book and that's simply just because I know what a 5 star Lauren Asher book feels like for me and this just wasn't that. This did not give me 100% of the same feelings that I felt when I read the fine print. And I know it's probably not fair to compare the two since like two different sets of characters, two different love stories, but they're all a part of the same series. And I just know what a five star Lauren Asher book feels like for me. And that was the fine print. And like I said, this just didn't feel that. Overall, I still really enjoy this and I like this book a hell of a lot better than I like Terms and Conditions, I'll tell you that much. As you can see here, I did tap this book up, not as much as I did the fine print, but there were some sweet quotes and sweet scenes that I just had to underline and put tabs next to because I just thought that they were so beautiful and I just love Cal so much. I really do. And even though this book was long, I didn't mind the length and I knew that Lauren Asher was going to have to explore more here just because of Cal's history. I knew that that was something that you couldn't rush or make into like a 200, 300 page book. So I do appreciate her for actually like sitting on this and like expanding and really trying to make sure that like she paced this out as best as she could. And to me, I felt like she did. But despite how I feel about Terms and Conditions, I still love this series. I still recommend it. And I just can't believe that it's over. I really loved this cast of characters and it was just so nice to see how all of them grew from the very first book all the way into the end. And so shout out to Lauren Asher. And of course I'm going to pick up the next series that exists within this universe. With the first book being Love Redesign. I don't have a physical copy of that book but I definitely plan on picking it up very soon because I want to jump into that world since I just finished Final Offer. I don't want to sit on that for too long. And I know that in Love Redesign the male MC gets introduced you in Final Offer. Now if I had to rate this entire series overall, I think I'm gonna give it a four. I feel like that's a fair rating, a solid rating. Regardless, I'm really excited to jump into the Lakefront Billionaire series and get started with Love Redesign. We are finally on the last book. This is the only book that I read during the month of January that got a five out of five star rating out of me and it is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Tashikazu Kawaguchi. I feel like everybody that has read this book, at least read this series, has given it high ratings and it's for good reason because wow, just wow. So I am going to read the synopsis for this book because it is pretty short and there are separate stories here. Right here in the flap it says, if you could go back, who would you want to meet? In a small back alley of Tokyo, there's a cafe that has been serving carefully brewed coffee for more than 100 years. 
Local legend says that this shop offers something else besides coffee, the chance to travel back in time. Over the course of one summer, four customers visit the cafe in the hopes of making that journey. But time travel isn't so simple, and there are rules that must be followed. Most important, the trip can only last as long as it takes for the coffee to get cold. Heartwarming, wistful, mysterious, and delightfully quirky, Tashikazu Kawaguchi's internationally best-selling novel explores the age-old question, what would you change if you could travel back in time? So this book definitely has some fantastical elements, but at its core, it is slice of life. But I think that Kawaguchi's ability to seamlessly blend literary fiction with fantasy was so well done. I felt like the sequence of the stories and the way in which all of these stories related to one another, even though they were separate, was brilliant. I just would love to sit down with Kawaguchi and try to really like understand the mechanics of their mind because the way in which they did this ate. Another aspect I really enjoyed is the way in which Kawaguchi explores death and grief and how it's not a one-size-fits-all approach for people. I just think that those are always going to be great reminders because I do feel like a lot of the times with you know everyone being so busy and just kind of caught up in their own worlds and their own selves we sometimes forget the bigger picture and we sometimes forget that just because you would do something or react to something a certain way doesn't mean that that's going to be the case for the next person. I just felt like those reminders make you pause stop and take a step back and really try to put yourself in other people's shoes. There are four stories in here. So you have the lovers, husband and wife, the sisters, and mother and child. My favorites were husband and wife and the sisters with the sisters being number one. That was my favorite story period. Now I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I actually did not read mother and child and that is because I just feel like I'm not ready for mother and child. I might return to that story one day in the future but as of right now I just I can't handle it. It's too much of a trigger. I'm very close with my mom. My mom is literally like my best friend and so I don't really like to read stories that center around the loss of a parent or the loss of a child and a parent dealing with that I just like I, I can't handle that so that's why I decided to not read mother and child especially because I just got out of a reading slump and I didn't want to read that story and it put me back into a dark place you know but I'm still considering this book finished I don't care I'm still going to give it a rating of five out of five stars even if I would have read that story I'm sure it would have hit me just as hard as the sisters and husband and wife did especially the sisters I actually cried at the end of the sisters I had such a visceral reaction to it, it just made me think about my own relationships with my siblings more specifically my older sister and so all of that to say I really appreciate what Kawaguchi did here and I totally understand why this book is so highly regarded. I feel like this would be a great book club book but I just feel like there are so many different discussions you could have and so many different self-reflection moments that you could have because of this book and just your own relationships with the people in your life. If you haven't read it yet or if you're so procrastinating don't. Pick it up seriously. I do have the second book in this series. I didn't want to read that after I read this just because I now know the vibes of these stories and just how intense and emotional they're going to get. So I feel like this is a series where I have to pace it out. The power of literature and the power of storytelling, ladies and gentlemen. This is why I love reading. This is why I love talking about reading and books and sharing my passion for it because it really does alter your brain chemistry. Like seriously, I know I've joked about that before. Seriously y'all, especially if you're a reader, if you're watching this and I'm sure you're a reader, you're a bookworm, you get it. Like books really do have the power to change your mind and your perception. I can't recommend this book enough though. Make sure you pick it up if you haven't and I would definitely let you guys know my thoughts on the other books when I get around to them. All right y'all and those are all of the books that I read during the month of January and as you can tell I had a great reading month and I'm so happy that I started off 2024 with a bang. I'm just hoping that I can keep up this momentum throughout the rest of the year. Fingers crossed that I can keep this up and I can keep giving you guys these recommendations and giving you guys this content but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me and my channel out and lastly please make sure you follow me on Bookstagram as well as Storygraph. I'll leave all of that information linked down below as well as at the end of the video like I always do. I will see you guys in my next video.